Hello viewers and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to have a quick look at the UT120 series pocket size multimeter. It's an auto ranging multimeter. Uh, you can find it on eBay from about £10. Obviously it's not going to be the best thing in the world, but I thought we'd do a quick review. Right, it comes in one of these blistery type packets, but for once it's actually pretty simple to uh, open. Uh, we do have some instructions and I have actually read the instructions and they're not too bad. Uh, some bits are worth giggling about it, but I thought the main thing is let's have a look at the meter. Here's the meter. The uh, probes don't look too bad and they are marked up I don't know if you can see that they are marked up as cat 2 600 volts but as for the uh, very very flimsy lead it comes with it this is definitely another one of these meters that I wouldn't like to measure AC on at all uh, ideal for your little hobbyist uh, electronics uh, person Anyone like that, anyone that wants to get in into the hobby. Right, I've got my little box here, it's just a variable resistor. And I'm just going to do some comparisons. I mean, like I said, I did read the instructions. Uh, there was actually two things uh, I thought, oh, well, that's quite novel. One's the relative. And the other one is it does the percentage of a waveform, so, which I may be able to show you actually. Yeah, I'll switch, I'll switch my scope on, I can probably show you that. Alright, that thing's first. Let's switch this on. Should we try and go for DC volts? And I will do the same with my trusty fluke. So got my trusty fluke. And I have just a uh, <coughs> 16650 battery this time. And we'll just measure it. You see we've got 4.178. So let's see what this is on DC volts. See how good or bad this is. Four point one six. So yeah, it's not too bad. On this one, the AC volts I am gonna totally ignore. I'm not even going to go down that road. So that leaves us with ohms. <coughs> so I thought what I could do is set up a few ohms here and then We'll measure them, see what it comes out as. Hundred kilo ohms. So what does our meter think of that? Kilo ohms, that's not too bad. It's a bit slow updating. Uh, should we go down? Uh, 50.2k. So, what does 50.24? Okay, right. Let's go. So I think I'm at the end of the uh, potentiometer, so it's a bit rough and ready. Mm, 340 ish. Not 
340 ish. Not bad. What about right up? 191. 191. Okay, so that's not too bad at all. Right, let's get this meter. Actually, keep this one here. And take away my variable resistance. And you may remember this from another one. Well, this one, if you remember rightly, would generate a frequency. Right, da -da -da. Don't know which one to go on in this meter. Never know. Picking up mains anyway. Forty-nine point three hertz. All right, let's go on to hertz. Forty-nine point three. So yeah, it's smack on on the frequency. I believe you can, while you're in an AC range, you can actually measure the hertz and that by just pressing this one. That's actually the percentage, so it's 49.9%, so there's a 50-50 pulse width coming out of this. Alas, I ain't got anything else that can show the percentage. Uh, it's nice that you've got an off in both end positions. And the other thing that I thought was quite useful is this relative I've got a board like this I mean I can't think of many uses but um, resistors in series would be definitely one right I see I've got 50 ohms there and it is slow 50 ohms there so across here I've got 100 ohms but what you could can do, uh, you need about four pairs of hands to actually do this. But you can, I'm just juggling me in. You can actually measure one. And you call, that's your relative. And then you can go and measure the other one. Because what it does, you measure that and basically it then takes this one into account. So then I know the reading from here will be the other one. Yeah, which is quite nice. You can do this with, I presume, all the ranges. Uh, can't say I've ever used it, but I can see the uses in it. Right, should we have a quick look inside? I'm sure it's just a coin cell battery. Let me get this open. Hmm. Almost lost it. Right. Come on. Gotta change the clip at the top. Oh yeah. Right, have a look. Your leads are coming in, as your negative goes to, there's a big negative plane there. Positive goes to here. Okay, it's just a very similar, really, in the other one. It looks a bit more complex. Uh, I see your buzzers behind there. Uh, there is some adjustment, but 
as you've seen, don't need to do any adjustment. It's not bad, a shame the leads ain't a bit better. Uh, obviously the leads are not pluggy in, pluggy outable. Apart from that, it doesn't look too bad. As I said before, I wouldn't try this on AC at all. Hmm. and hurts. So yeah, for the hobbyist, yeah, ideal. Comes in a nice little case. It's actually nice that there's a copper thread in there instead of just screwing into plastic, which makes it feel a bit more robust. It actually feels quite a nice. I mean, I've seen some quite a few of these in my time. And it looks quite, quite good for what it is. Can't get it back together though. So, come on! I think the grommet jumped out on me. Get in, yep. There. Almost full. So yeah, available on eBay. They're about ten pound. I actually got this as a freebie. So thought I'd just do a quick teardown. Case is nice. This may even be the one that goes in the car opposed to like this one. Okay, this is getting tiresome. There ain't not much else I can say about this. But yep. Yeah. Ideal for playing around with uh, hobby electronics and that. Avoid mains, AC, anything over 40, 50 volts, you'd be good. <coughs> has advantages over for this one this one's auto ranging so it's put it on an owns and check okay many thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe